Girl, jump, 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 and hop, jump, jump again, sir. How many miles to Dublin town with Forest Garden ten, sir? Isn't it time to stop this traveling in the dark and the child shiver? We would not. And that's not two hours or maybe three from Chicago itself. <laughs> says I. Come on, get along with you, lazy devils. I'd be laying me whipping your backs. Chicago will not be moving. And us living there for the rest of our days, God willing. Now, I'll not be held back by your tongue. A fine city waiting there just over the rim of the land. I'll rest there tonight, I said to myself. And so I will. It is a mighty city will be built here. The hub. Yes, the hub of the country. Filling all this prairie land. And you boys living to see it. Oh, indeed. Come on, get along with you. Look, Paul. It's a train. Come on, Paul, it's racing. By the twinkling stars of heaven, I will. Come on, Paul. You can go first. And we have to open up my mind. Go on, Paul. You can miss it. for that. It was my own fault and no other. <laughs> it's the devil's own doing, though. To be dragging me down and bumping the life out of me. Just when the smell of Chicago's in me nose. Jack. Diane. Come closer here. Here to see you. And mind what I have to say. It is a grand new place, this Chicago. And them that grow with it will be rich and strong, like I was always minded to be. It is a boom. And you'll boom with it. Someday you'll be fine, big men. A credit to me name. And everybody's speaking with respect of the O'Learys. And how they grew up with the city and, and put their mark on it. You're wasting yourself, Patrick. You with your fine talk. It's my last breath I'm using. I'll have me say. Help me to put him in the wagon. We've got to find a doctor. No. No, it's no use. Just bury me here. And let Chicago come to me. That couldn't come to it. Molly. Oh. Patrick. Patrick. Ma! Oh. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, help my pet to rest in peace. Him that was so restless on earth, for he was a good man for all his fine ambitions. And if there ever was food to be got or shelter, or you wanted someone to laugh with or have a bit of a good time, you didn't have to look any further than Patrick O'Leary. But I need not be telling you all this. You know it better than I do. Amen. Get the horses ready, boy. Goodbye, pet. Someday I'll be sending the priest to speak the proper words. Take care of you. I'll do what he said. You know, about Chicago and... Sure, Ma. We'll take care of you. I'm gonna make a lot of money and get your things and... Hush it. For both of you. Get me wagon. Tights or worse. All right, Ma. Gee, look at them horses. Ain't they cute? <laughs> look, they're stuck. Yeah, in the mud. I mean you. Could I bother you to assist us ladies to the sidebar? I'm sorry, ma'am, but I got all my new store-bought pants.
it behind. A pair of tender hands and plenty of soap, and it'll be as good as new. You don't know what you're talking about. There's not a worse woman in this town that could save this dress. Oh, is that so now? And what would you say if I told you that I could do it myself? If it was worth the time. All right, you're so smart. You save this dress and I'll give I'll you... I'll be naming the price. And you provide the soap and the towel. Dublin town, a three score and ten, sir. Will I be there by candlelight? Yes, and that is you, sir. How many miles to Dublin town? Three score and ten, sir. Will I be there by candlelight? Yes, and back again, sir. Hey, Mom! Mom, I'm back. I got three from Gil Warren and two from Mrs. Palmer. Oh, and she says a pair of her watch my columns are missing. Oh, she did. Well, you can tell the fine lady she'll get them back when she pays for the soap she owes. Yes, sir. And put up the hall. And give him some water and oats. And be sure the barn door's fastened. And then get your hands and face washed before it's supper. Yes, sir. Gretchen. Yeah? Oh, God. Oh. Look out! Ah! The milk's gone! <laughs> oh, it's all right. No, you was crying over it. Now it's Bill. Well, she might have kicked you. Say, I told you never to milk her without putting that bar between her legs. That's what it's for. Daisy, you huzzy. This is old Annie. What will she say? Oh, that's all right. I'll fix it with Ma. Yeah? Yeah. Gee. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Daisy. Ma! Ma! Out here, Jack! I thought you were coming down to court to hear me. Is all Chicago waiting to be washed? Get along with you. Where to get the time? Oh, I sure made him sit up and take notice. Did you now? I told them just what I thought about him. My client is right, I said, and you know it. But what do you care about people? as long as you can fill your pockets. No wonder they say this is the worst city in the country with politicians like Gil Warren running things. And how did that fine gentleman like that? Oh, he was sweating plenty. Sure, I Take said. What, what, what do you care about Chicago being bad? As long as business is good, and you've got all the beef and pork in the world. But I'll tell you this, it takes more than those things to make this a great city. It, it takes people with some sense of decency to make this not only the biggest city in the world, but the best. It's a fine silver tongue, y'all. And your father'd be that proud of you, I'm thinking. And, and I told him... Hey, well, goodbye, boys. Don't let him keep you too long. Hey, if you see my old lady, tell her I'm sitting up with a friend that was took sick. Have a cigar, Jim. Thanks for the ride. I'll do the same for you. Thanks, lad. Anytime you're coming our way, just let us know. We'll be glad to have you with us. I'll remember that. <laughs> Watch the mud on your shoes, Pickle. You know Ma. Hey, Ma. It's me. <laughs> Hello, Mom. <Ma. laughs> Howdy, Miss Old Hi, Jack. Hello, Pickle. Sorry you lost your case, Jack. Lost? Sure, I uh, I forgot to tell you. The judge dismissed it. Heaven help me in all the time I thought he'd won it. Oh, don't worry. Warren won't hold it against you as long as you lost. Yeah, I heard all about it. Fellas said Jack had the whole courtroom hypnotized. Yeah, everybody but the judge. Yes, not have had him, too. Only Gil Warren put him on the bench. Keep your hand away from that. Oh, but Ma, it's just the right size. And by the way, Ma, for the last time, will you quit this laundry business? And why should I be quitting? Oh, because I don't want my best girl bending over a wash tub all her life. Oh, go along with you now. Look, Ma, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll get you a new place, out of the patch. Set you up like the finest hussy in town. Huh? Look. Look, Ma. Where did you get that money? The fellow paid me. You're lying. You've been gambling at that racetrack again. Oh, but there wasn't any gambling to it, Ma. There are only eight horses in the race, mine and seven others. So all we had to do was shoot the other seven. Hmm. Huh, indeed. Come on, Ma, how about it, hmm? I'll not be living on money that isn't honestly got. <laughs> all right, give us a kiss then, huh? Now, Diane, oh, Diane, get Ma, along with you. I've got my work. <laughs> Diane! <laughs> oh, Diane! 
Das ist beschmutzen Wump, wo ich schaut. Look at it. I told that Gil Warren I wouldn't wash any more tablecloths. They've been drawing pictures on. Send it back. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. This looks like a map. Maybe Warren's gonna hunt for a buried treasure. <laughs> hunt for it? He's already found it in the city treasury. <laughs> Something about Randolph Street uh -huh. and Madison. Yeah. This looks like the tracks for the horse car line. Uh -huh. I know what it is. This means they're gonna run the car line along Randolph Street. <laughs> ah, you're crazy. They've already surveyed Madison for the tracks. Sure they have. That's exactly what makes me think they're gonna run along Randolph. My golly, maybe you're right. Of course I'm right. That's the way they cheat the people, get them to invest on Madison Street and then switch the line by their own property. What an idea. If you're right, this information is worth a fortune. Ha! Listen to him. And I'm going to get part of it. You with your fine talk and your grand plans. Not a penny ever honestly earned to your name. Maybe so. But if I had this corner right here where all the traffic meets, I'd put up the biggest saloon in town. Saloon? And free beers to you, Mrs. O'Leary. I wouldn't be stepping my foot inside. <laughs> then I guess we'll have to keep on rushing the growler for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but look. There's a name already scribbled in right on my corner. B F A W C E Double T. B Fawcett. Ever heard of him? No, no, it's a new one on me. Stop it! Stop it, I yacht of your mind! I've got to have his name, Ma. Come on, we'll go down to Gil Warren's and see what we can find out about this faucet fellow. You ruined it! There was already a hole in it, Mrs. O'Leary. The camp. Hello, Rondo. Where's Mr. Warren? The other end of the bar. Hello, Mr. Warren. Oh, hello, sir. Howdy, Mr. Warren. What can I do for you? Well, I'd like to talk to you for a moment. Sure, go ahead. Well, it's kind of private, and I thought that... Uh, uh, not now, not now. A little later, perhaps. Stick around. Glad to have seen you. She's new. New as far as Chicago's concerned. She was the biggest hit Niblo's Garden in New York ever had. A sensation. And I'm paying her a bigger price than any entertainer in this town ever got. That's Belle Fawcett. Oh, Belle Fawcett. B. Fawcett? Free 
that a treat tonight. The proceeds to go to the widow and orphans of our late bartender, Aloysius O'Malley, who was shot in front of this very door. My little girls are going to give a special performance of our famous classic, Living Statues, an artistic divertisement straight from New York and Paris, France. <laughs> and remember, gentlemen, it's all for sweet charity and no tights. What am I bid? One dollar. One dollar? Do I hear two? Four dollars. Before the gentleman says, who'll make it five? I'll pay five. Five. Now we're getting somewhere. Who'll make it six? Speak right up, Hanson. What is it, six? I'll pay one hundred dollars to charity if Belle Fawcett plays Venus. We have a comedian in the house. Go ahead, take his offer. Sold to Hanson for one hundred dollars. Come on, let's see the color of your money. Fifty, seventy, ninety, one hundred. Whiskey! Right through that door, I'll be with you in a moment. Thank you. is here. Will you tell Mr. Warren I'll meet him for lunch tomorrow at the Palmer House? Yes, Miss Fawcett. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Oh, idiot. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Shut up. I won't. Let me out of here. Shut up. Shut up. Let me out of here or I'll jump. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jump. Oh, it's you. Drive it. Driver! Oh, you're yelling at him. I fixed him. Oh, you're crazy. You're crazy. Maybe. But I was sane enough until tonight. Then I heard you sing. Oh. And something happened to me. Something swept over me I'd never felt before or ever expect to feel again. What are you talking about? I'm in love with you, Bill. Get out of our call the police! They can't stop me from loving you. Maybe not. They can sure cool you off, brother. Oh, I know it sounds crazy, and I apologize, but it's true. And right now, my heart's pounding so. Listen to it. No, oh, fool! And I'm trembling all over. And I want to be calm and cool so I can make you understand. Say, are you on the level? Absolutely. But I don't even know who you are. Well, does that matter? It does to me. And I'll tell you another thing. I didn't like that cheap trick you pulled on me. Oh, but I had to talk to you alone. What gave you the idea you could make love to me like this? Oh, just give me a chance. I'll tell you the whole story. All right. You can stop here and buy me a drink. No, not here. It's too crowded. Since you've taken me by storm, the, the least you might do is to take me to your place so we can really talk. Very well. But your story had better be good. All right, George, you can drive to Miss Fawcett's home. So this is where you live, eh? Yes. Way up there on the second floor. Well, I think I can make it. Back to the hut, quick! Hey, wait a minute! Whew. What a woman. Let's tell Ma. Yeah, if you want to. Do you reckon she suspects? I was never that surprised in all my life. All this hand-holding and goo grinding and sighing and giggling. I'm all wore out trying to look the other way. Oh, Ma. 
No, I suppose you'd be telling me you want to get married. Why, sure. You scam, taking the best iron ore I ever had. Well, if it's love you're after, I guess a few shirts and tablecloths can't stand in the way. But I won't have you sitting around and waiting and not eating. You'll be getting married right away, and I want no back talk about it. I could be that pale. And I'd be ashamed with a fine spring moon outside, and you in a barn, putting ideas into the head of a temperamental cow. <laughs> <laughs> So you're in love at last? Sure, Mike. With you. And are you now? And I suppose it's for me that you're slicking your hair and titivating yourself in front of a mirror till it's half wore out. <laughs> well, you want me to look nice, don't you? And I suppose you'll be holding her hands, maybe stealing a kiss, and her telling you how grand you are and calling you pretty names. Here, let Ma do it. And you believe in her. <laughs> ah! That shirt. I thought so. Now take it off. Oh, but Ma, it's a beaut. Look. D DVS, who's that? His name is Swift, and he sells pigs. Now, take it off. I need to go back in the morning. Oh, come on, Ma. Look, I'll take, take good it care off. of it. Look, it fits take just it like it's made from me. Oh. Take it off. <laughs> Who's the best darn washerwoman in the whole blooming city of Chicago, huh? Ma! Ma! Say, Ma, I won my first case. <laughs> I knew you would. I knew you would. The jury wasn't out more than 15 minutes, and the judge said it was the finest speech he's heard all session, and so did the lawyer from the other side. And yippee! <laughs> Congratulations, Jack. I always knew you had it in your tongue. And a fellow from the Tribune said he's going to write it up. You're going to get your name in the paper? Yes, yes. <laughs> how much did you get? Well, huh? I say, how much did you get? You did get paid for it, didn't you? Well, uh, you see, Ma, the fellow only makes $10 a week, and he's got a wife and a family. <laughs> Ten dollars a week, that's just ten dollars more than you make. I couldn't take his money, could I, Ma? I give up. I've got one son that steals my laundry and spends his money heaven knows where, another a lawyer and wins cases and don't get paid for them. I should have bought the two of you up as good Irish bricklayers in every Saturday payday. <laughs> oh, don't mind her, as long as she can keep her job. Night, Ma. Don't sit up for me, I may be late. Hmm. <laughs> Indeed. Where's he going, all dressed up? Where is any of us going? And where is it all going to end? Well, for one thing, we can always be going in to supper. Gosh, Ma, I wish you could have heard what that judge said. Mm -hmm. ah, Cause I likes myself just as I use. That you, Miss Bell? Yes. Any messages for me? No, nothing except a heap more flowers and some champagne from that same young gentleman. <laughs> Lord, honey, you sure got him snorting in his sleep. I hope you threw them out. I threw out the roses, Miss Bell, but you knows what a mess broken bottles make. Did you tell him not to come around here anymore? I done told him that till I'm black in the face. Oh, these corsets are so tight I can hardly breathe. As long as the men folks likes a small waist, us gals has got to suffer. You want anything else, Miss Bell? No, thank you, Hattie. Good night. Good night. You can call me early tomorrow afternoon. Yes, sir. Get out of here. Get out! But listen, I tell you, I want to... Get out of here! But now, Belle, I want to talk to... Get out! Now, listen, Belle, don't act like that. What do you mean by breaking Belle, into my place? Belle, I want to speak place? to you now. What do you don't mean? Don't be like that. Belle, don't act like that. What I want to you... speak to you. Get out of here! Now, Belle. Get out of here! Wait. Hey! I want to Belle! Speak to Belle! Now, won't you tell me what this is all about? I love you, Belle. I mean, really. 
Well? I want the truth. Well, you have a piece of property on Randolph Street. Well, I... All the... And I thought that if you and I were to put up a place like Warren's, only better, more class, we could make a lot of money. But I really, I really meant that about being crazy about you. <laughs> Why didn't you say so in the first place? I'm a businesswoman. I'd have listened to any proposition without all this foolishness. You would have? Of course I would. What a woman. Right over this way, Mr. Peace. <gasps> Sorry, boss. But looks like the fire's out. Now look, Senator. Gil Warren controls the patch with all its votes. No, you need votes. Now, as long as Warren goes along with no opposition, he has you and your interests just where he wants them. Who knows, but the day may come when Warren gets other ideas that would be embarrassing. We have an offer to make Now, I have the greatest attraction that ever came to Chicago. Miss Fawcett. Now, with your backing and your money to get us started, we'll open the greatest saloon Chicago's ever known, on the busiest corner in town. Then I'll control the patch. I'll tell them how to vote. And what's more, Senator, do you see this floor? You see those real silver dollars that Potter Palmer put in there? Well, every month after we get started, Senator, there'll be 1,000 of those for you. What do you say? Are you in? I'm always in the market for marketable goods. Go ahead. Full protection for me, security for you and your family, and $100 in cash every Monday from now on. Young man, are you trying to bribe me? Why, Commissioner, how can you say such a word? Welcome to the Senate and hope you enjoy yourself. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. O'Shaughnessy. Welcome to the Senate. Hey, you mugs. Where do you think you are? Take off your hats. Keep on your coats and shake hands with the boss. Where do you think you're going? Now listen, Shorty. You're taking the wrong altitude. Because this is the only saloon in town I ain't been thrown out. Well, I'll give you just five minutes. <laughs> I can do it in three. That's telling them. Well, there's no place like home when you're home. Town is my town. A place you've got to like the best. A bit of heaven in the middle west. Oh, you won't want to roam when you make my town your town. So, partner, take a tip from me. You'll be happy, happy, happy if you happen to be in old Chicago. There's life and there's love where Lake Michigan flows in old Chicago. Where music and laughter come after your woes. And when you find that you're part of it, you'll be the beating heart of it. In old Chicago, where Lady Luck will give you your chance for fortune, fame, and romance. In old Chicago, there's love.
are, Captain Jameson. Welcome. And this is my daughter, Anne. Oh, Miss Colby. How do you do? How do you do? I've been begging Father for months to bring me here tonight for the opening. I'm glad he did. It's marvelous. I've never seen anything like it. Thank you. And now may I show you to your table? Please do. Gentlemen, you give me the Senate, I give you Chicago. <laughs> Father says you're the smartest young man in Chicago. That's because he knows I'll deliver the patch on election day. He says you have a great future, as big as Gil Warren. You just do as he says. Well, he's the boss and one of America's finest. Now, I must change my costume. Oh, allow me. I want to talk to you, my boy. I have some great plans in store. Oh, surely not tonight, Senator, when you have so beautiful a daughter to entertain us. Oh, Father won't talk business if I ask him not to. Will you, darling? <laughs> I can't imagine the Senator doing anything that you asked him not to. No, that's right. She wraps me around her finger all the time. <laughs> uh, excuse me, please. I'll be right back. We'll expect you. He's nice looking, isn't he? I mean, for someone from the patch. Hello, Warren. Why, hello, son. Mr. O'Leary. Jim Dandy place you've got here. Thanks. Nothing like it in Chicago. I'm proud of you. You mean you're not sore? Why, no. I've come over to bury the hatchet. Live and let live, that's my motto. Come on, have a drink. Matter of fact, I wanted a word in private with you. Oh, sure. Come on in my office. See you in a minute, Rondo. Oh, uh, Rondo, step up to the bar. Anything you want on the house. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. How old are you, son? Oh, old enough to vote. Why? Oh, I was just thinking. You've come along mighty fast. Why, when I was your age, do you know what I was doing? I was rounding up runaway slaves and practically starving to death. Sit down, Gil. Take it from me, times have changed. Everything's youth today. Well, you seem to have done pretty well, Gil. Oh, I've managed. But you've got a great future ahead of you. Mark my words. Well, I hope you're right. I don't blame you for taking Belle. She's a great woman. I'd have married her if I'd had the chance, but I know she never cared for me. It was just a business deal and you outbid me. What's on your mind? What would you say, son, if I told you I was going to close the hub, quit? I'd say you were up to something. What is it? I'm thinking of running for mayor. Mayor? Well, I've been electing them long enough. Now I'm going to elect myself if you'll ride along with me. Well, how do I come in? You're a smart young fella. If you watch your step, you're going to be a big power in this town. I could build a bigger place and give you trouble. But I've had all I want of this. You say the word and I'm through. You close the hum? Exactly. And give you an open field. Now, we either work together politically or fight it out. It's up to you. It's a nice place you have here, but like a tinderbox. Touch a match to it and it'll go off like a Roman candle. <laughs> but what the devil, Chicago's big enough for both of us and more. Together we could run this town and run it right. You and Bell and me pulling together, it'd be a lead pipe cinch. Yeah, sounds all right. But uh, naturally there's a little expense involved and right now with the... I took the liberty of bringing along my check for $10,000. There'll be more between now and election time. I think we'll manage very well, Your Honor. <laughs> now I could use that drink you were talking about. <laughs> come on. Now, Belle, you've got to come to my table right now and have a bottle of wine with me. Oh, I'd love to. But you'll have to excuse me for one minute. Belle! Hello. I thought I saw you come in here. I was just telling Diane what a great place you've got. You. I never saw you looking so beautiful. <laughs> I always did say she was the best looker Chicago ever saw. Thanks. <laughs> Better watch yourself, son. I'll get her back if I can. But it looks like it won't be to the hub. Oh, yes, Gil's closing the hub. For oh, good. Really? Why? Oh, Bell, there's the music for your song. Better hurry. <laughs> Better well, hurry, dear. Diane will tell you all about it later. <laughs> what a woman. Yes, that's exactly what I said the first time I saw her. Remember? I've made some resolutions. They're all concerning you. So there'll be no misunderstandings. I'll recite a few. I'll never let you cry over me. You'll never. 
Fawcett. How do you do? How do you do? So sorry, you'll have to excuse Mr. O'Leary another few minutes. I'll send him back. Well, that'll be very sweet of you. Thank you. Is that the woman? Uh, why, uh, yes, I believe so. She's pretty, in a way. Women like her have all the advantage, don't they? All except one. I wasn't thinking of marriage. So you're taking his money? Well, what's the matter with his money? The check's good, isn't it? You know very well how he feels about us, the threats he's made. And... I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. Listen, ever since I left his place, he schemed to get even. Now he's trying to do it with your own help. He knows that if he's mayor... What makes you think he's going to be mayor? But you took his money. Sure. Sure, and I'll vote for him, myself, if necessary. But I didn't say how the patch will vote. Oh, why, that's... Politics. He'd knife me if he could, and I simply mean to beat him to it. Dirty dog. You love me? Certainly not. Go on, say it, or I'd break your back. Who was that little doll-faced blonde you were smiling all over yourself about? Senator's daughter. I have to be nice to him, don't I? Then why weren't you breathing down his neck? Stop it. You and Senate and Warren on the run. In other words, Mr. O'Leary is rising in the world. Mr. O'Leary and present company. Chief Mitch is here. Come on in and shut the door. Is it true that you were caught registering under a false name? Oh, gee, Chief, how was I to know that guy was already registered? I told you this, Bozo. Don't use his hand. Oh, how to brain you. Getting caught with an election coming up and that reform crowd already yelling its head off? It'd serve you right if I let him send you to jail for life. But no, I've got to sit through a trial and try to figure a way to get you out. Oh, I ought to get out. Yeah, come on out. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. Good morning. Good morning. Everything fixed? The district attorney said, if you're worried, he'll let us have some of his witnesses to prove Mitch hasn't even been in Chicago in two years. Now, that's the kind of prosecutor I like. What did you give him? The usual. Jeez, it ain't fair, it ain't fair, it ain't fair! What's the matter? Oh, the district attorney, and after we had him all fixed. What are you talking about? Well, he fell down and broke his ankle, and he ain't here. The fool doesn't even know how to walk straight. And the judge appointed to somebody to take his place, and I don't know who. What's this mean? It, it means it ain't fixed. 
Now, oh, come on. In view of the unavoidable detention of the district attorney, the court has appointed a special counsel, a representative of the Election Reform Committee, in the case of the city of Chicago versus Edward Mitchell. Mr. O'Leary, are you prepared to proceed? We're ready, Your Honor. Is the uh, defense ready? Uh, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, certain matters have come up. New evidence have been uncovered that compels me to... Go ahead with the trial. Go ahead, proceed. The defense is ready, Your Honor. You may proceed, Mr. O'Leary. Your Honor, it is no secret that multiple voting for years has been a common practice in that section of Chicago known as the Patch. So common, it has come to be regarded as one of the minor evils in that district. Men who occupy the highest offices in this city openly and brazenly bid against each other for that very vote. Any mention of it is dismissed with an indulgent smile as something that should not be talked about. There are men in this very courtroom, Your Honor, who control every election in this city with such illegal votes. Men who sit in their fine saloons, surrounded by every luxury that money can buy or that they can steal, while public officials bow and smile before them and fight for their favor. Until today, nobody has ever obtained sufficient evidence to convict them. Now, however, we have an eyewitness who was actually present when the defendant, Edward Mitchell, was caught attempting to register under four different names. The last time, as the beloved Bishop Cornwall himself. <laughs> you know, he's really good. Someday he'll be a great lawyer. I think he's all right now. Mr. Clerk, call Carrie Donahue to the stand. Carrie Donahue, take the stand. You can't do this to me. Quiet. Stand up, raise your right hand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, out be God. I do. What's your I... name? Carrie Donahue. Sit down. Mr. Donahue, you know this defendant? Do I know him? <laughs> that big squirt. None of that now. You, I'm going to haul off. Sit down. Quiet. Ordering the court. Refrain from personal remarks. Tell the court what you know about this man's registration. Well, my gentleman friends hired to watch the registrations, and I'm keeping him company when this big squirt walks in. Well, he don't see me, and I don't say anything. But when he keeps coming back, I get suspicious. And I'm just about to tell my friend that something funny's going on here, when sure enough, back he comes again. And this time, he says he's a bishop. Well, that's too much, even for me. <laughs> what you get for order, order in the court. You married to this one? What? Can you imagine it? Ever divorce her? No! Your Honor! May it please the court. Get out of we ask that this woman's testimony be stricken from the records. And this case dismissed on the grounds of the law says a wife cannot testify against her husband. That woman is my client's lawful wedded spouse. Madam, is this true? Well, I married him once, if that's what you mean. But I can tell you... That will that... do. Well, I mean that he... That will do. Well, <laughs> Mr. O'Leary, you distinctly told me that you had had time to familiarize yourself with all the facts in the case. And yet you take up this court's time, allowing your only witness to testify, although she's clearly unqualified. Your Honor, I assure you, this is as much a prize to me as it is to you. I ask the court's pardon. Case dismissed. <laughs> Tough break, kid. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, you can never tell about these women. They'll put it over on you every time if they can. But you were great yourself. I was proud of you. Well, I go after the big fish. The higher-ups. Then you really hear something. Oh, that's the way to talk. How about meeting Belle? It's about time. <laughs> Belle, this is Brother Jack. Jack, Miss Fawcett. How do you do? I've been looking forward to this for a long time, Miss Fawcett. You have? Yes. Diane isn't the only admirer of beauty in the family. <laughs> Thank you. That was a very nice thing to say. 
I couldn't help but look at you all through the trial. <laughs> Maybe that's why you lost your case. <laughs> uh, can we drop you someplace? Oh, no, 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 thanks. I've, uh, I've got some things to do here in the building. You all seem kind of funny. You and Diane on one side and me on the other, fighting each other. <laughs> when we were kids, we were always fighting. But I bet if any other Irish has tried to horn in, it was the O'Leary's against the world. Oh, you said it. You two must have had fun when you were little. We still do. Even though we don't always see eye to eye. Well, I've got to leave you here. But I'll tell you what to do, Miss Fawcett. Or shall I call you Belle? Please do. Let Diane bring you up the house sometime for dinner. Meet Ma. Oh, I'd be delighted. I want to show you some pictures of Diane in his first communion suit at the age of nine. <laughs> <laughs> and some of you without any suit at all at the age of six months. <laughs> We should keep an eye on this fellow for us. He's getting up in the world so fast, it might go to his head. And I kind of hate to have to knock it off. I'll try. Goodbye. See you soon. Goodbye, Jack. You know, I like him. Oh, they don't make him any better. That was nice of him, wanting me to meet your mother. Well, yes, I've been thinking about that myself. Oh, no. I understand how she feels about me. Oh, Ma's all right. A little old-fashioned, perhaps, but... Oh, please. I had no idea he was so... so human. Oh, sure. <laughs> Takes after me. You know, there's something almost noble about him. He just looks so real, you know he believes everything he says. Honestly, it just makes me sick to think of a man like Gil Warren trying to run Chicago when there are men here like your brother. Can you imagine the mayor he'd make if he had the chance? Well, if he hadn't gotten mixed up with that reform crowd... Uh, wait a minute. I've got an idea. What? I just thought what to do with that check Gil Warren gave me. Back to the Senate. In brief, Mr. O'Leary, we've come here to ask you to run for mayor. What? We have canvassed the field thoroughly, and you're the man we want. Well, this is all very flattering, gentlemen. May I, may I ask whom you represent? The respectable people of Chicago. Citizens who want a new deal in our city administration. You're organizing a reform party. Well, I'm not sure I'm the man. We're willing to take that chance. It's a great opportunity, Mr. O'Leary. Decent people are waiting for an honest program. You'll carry every district, except perhaps Gil Warren's patch. And I'm not so sure you won't get that, too. Your brother's influential there. Surely he'll support you. Oh, I'm afraid you can't count on my brother. You see, we O'Leary's are a strange tribe. Then we'll win without the patch. Chicago needs you. Yes, Mr. O'Leary. Will you do it, sir? Thank you, gentlemen. I'll run. Oh, that's the boy, boy. Of you, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dutch, what did he say when you suggested that I would support him? He said he's afraid he couldn't figure on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he's agreed to run. That's the first step. What worries me is, can you control him once he's in? He's a pretty stubborn young fellow. You leave that to me. We O'Leary's are a strange tribe. How's that? Well, not bad. Of course, it doesn't look much like you. <laughs> Jack O'Leary, candidate for mayor. Reform ticket. That's a great thing for Chicago. I'd like to help. You help me? Sure, why not? If other people say you're good enough to be mayor, I'm not going to say no. Of course, I, I couldn't support you openly. You know how I feel about the patch. Oh, of course, no strings attached. The fact you're my brother wouldn't mean a thing. Stop arguing, will you? If you stood in the way of something I felt ought to be done, I'd go after you as fast as I would after anybody else. Maybe faster. Because I'm in dead earnest. I see Chicago as a great city. A place people can be proud of. I'd wipe out all this mushroom growth. Start all over on a sound basis. With steel and stone. You don't have to make speeches to me, Jack. I just wanted you to know where I stand. <laughs> well, how much do I owe you? I'm two games up on you. Ah. Twenty cents. What a gambler. It's in the blood. <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, why don't you get Belle and come to the house tonight and take her and Ma for a drive? <laughs> you know Ma. Oh, we'll get a couple of beers under her belt. <laughs> well, heaven help us if it doesn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Genevieve, sweet Genevieve,
<laughs> to his honor, the future mayor. To Chicago. <laughs> and to herself, the first lady of the city. Oh, to the lot of you. <laughs> <laughs> the compliments of the season to you, ma'am. Oh, go on, more presents. <laughs> oh, you should see the grand house we're getting for you. Inside plumbing. And a butler in short pants. <laughs> Heaven help me. It's himself. English. Ah, it was very spitable. Just like him. Sure got my nose. <laughs> I can remember the day we took it, like it was yesterday, and the trouble we had putting a collar on him. <laughs> well, Ma, where are we going to hang him? Hang him? You'll do no such. He's going to spend the rest of his days on this organ. <laughs> <laughs> if he'd only could have seen it himself. Isn't he beautiful? I want the baby to see it. Look, that's your grandpa. Oh, Pat, would you believe it? And Bob, just a baby himself. If you turn out half as good as the blood that's in you, I'll not complain. You know, Mom, it looks to me like Pa had a sort of a roving eye for the ladies. Oh, thank you to keep a civil tongue in your head. <laughs> roving eye. Huh, I'd like to catch him. Luke, you're so good to me. The lot of you, you'll have me in tears before I know it. Oh, Ma, beer always did make you cry. Listen to him. <laughs> we'll play him a tune, his favorite one. Oh, come on, Ma, and play it. Go on, the four of you, and we'll show him a thing or two. The O'Leary's against the world. The O'Leary's against, against, against the world. world. We will, lad. Come on, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> the dance, as light as a canary and stealing a kiss before you could shut your eyes. And the fair Molly Callahan loving it, I'm thinking. And why shouldn't I be loving it? And himself was fine, a man who's ever stood up with a girl in front of an altar. And that's what you should be doing. That's what I was telling him today. Is it herself you mean? I met Miss Fawcett. She's a fine woman. You ought to know her, Ma. Hmm. I will not. And her working in a saloon like any hussy? Oh, that's not fair, Ma. We're living in modern times. That's right. Don't forget, things have changed since you were a girl. This is 1870. Well, times may have changed, but I haven't changed. And I don't want any daughter-in-law that's the talk of the town and kicking her heels in the air for anyone to see. When you were a little one, no bigger than that, and me over a tub, I used to dream of the day when you'd bring me home a sweet one and her old blushes, and present me with fine grandsons, as would be like sons of my own, only sweeter. Well, it's my own life, Ma. Who'll have some more beer? Me. I wouldn't mind another drop. Here, Ma. Put a head on it. Good evening, Mr. Jack. Will you tell Mr. Dyer on his buggy's here? Oh, thanks. You'll be right out. Now, Ma, drink your beer and forget about it. Let's us go for a ride, huh? Oh, sure. How about it, Ma? That I will. Oh, uh, fine. I'll get your coat and hair. Help me, Gretchen. Yeah. Oh, Ma. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> drink it all, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> and now, First Lady, I've got a real surprise for you. Two of the fastest stepping swimmers you ever sat behind. Now close your eyes till you get inside. Close them now. Up one step. There you go. Inside. Ma, this is Miss Fawcett. This is Belle. Hmm. So it's a trick. Oh, no, wait a minute. Listen, Ma, you're going to meet Belle, so you might as well get used to the idea. The devil I will. Let me out. Oh, Ma, you always were so stubborn. If you don't stop it, I'll give you the licking of your life. Well. You don't think I'm going to ride with her after this, oh, do you? Come back. I'm going oh, to back. Sit down. No, 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 no. Driver, no, drive on. Drive on. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit me out, 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 out. Let me out. Stop it, I tell you. I won't be treated this way. You Irish lunkhead, what do you think you're doing? My son, an Irish lunkhead. And how would you like to be treated? You with your grand manners. Just as any woman who's going to be his wife has a right to be treated. He'll never marry you. And now, if you stop this thing, I'll be taking my leave. Stop here. Ooh. Wait a 
wait, I'll get out. You'll do no such. It's you he'd be saving the wear and tear of walking. Ma. Hmm. How could you? I'm sorry. I, I didn't think Ma'd act like that. Take me home, please. My friends, this campaign has resolved itself into one clear-cut issue. Shall the patch run Chicago, or shall Chicago run the patch? I promise you that if I am elected, the patch will either be cleaned up, or it will be wiped out, like that. Hooray for get warned. <laughs> Who said that? Oh, it's a shame. Well, the trouble with him is he looks too honest. People never trust an honest man in office. Well, I, I wish he hadn't tried it. He'll never beat Warren. Never say never about politics. What are you up to now? Well, I was just wondering what would happen if all Gil Warren's ward healers and poll watchers and repeaters Failed to show up on election day. What do you mean? Well, he wouldn't stand much chance of being elected, would he? George, drive to Commissioner Beavers. Gilwarn's my friend. I won't do it. I can't. I won't do it. I can't. I'll be ruined forever. For doing your duty? Oh, come, come, Commissioner. Be a man. He'll kill me. Besides, what you're asking is against the law. Against all my principles. You've been getting $100 a week for doing what I tell you. Every cent I got was in cash. Well, sure. Sure, I paid you in cash. But I always sent it by a different man. What? What do you mean? Those 15 or 20 people would make mighty fine witnesses if you ever got any ideas in your head. Blackmail, eh? All right. I'll fight. Go ahead. Fight. And you'll be back pounding the pavement so quick it'll make your head swim. Come on, he'll be there. This guy. I never saw him before in my life. One of us is in error. I'll side you before I cloud up and rain all over you. That severs our relation. One of them reform guys. Have they got no manners? Didn't think that you'd be having the first dance with his honor, the future mayor, did you? 
your honor. Are you counting your chickens before they're hatched? <laughs> it's a lead pipe sink. Oh. you with that Colby woman again and you won't call it fun. in 30 minutes. All right, what's the bail? Sorry, Mr. Warren. Orders are to hold them 24 hours without bail. On suspicion. What kind of suspicion? Suspicion of what? Just plain suspicion. You can't do that. This is election day. They're my workers. By the eternal, you've got to let them go. It ain't up to me. I'll get the commissioner. I'll get Senator Colby. I'll get my lawyer. I'll tear this town wide open. <laughs> Commissioner Beavers. Call the sanitarium. Where? What sanitarium? I'm sorry, sir, but I'm not allowed to give out his address. Doctor's orders. Where's Judge Bender? Oh, the judge, judge. I've judge. got to see Judge Bender. Judge Bender left on a hunting trip this morning. All the judge, judge judges in the in town went with him. They're all organizing a Hunting club. Then I've got to see Senator Cole. Oh, I'm afraid that's impossible. You can't do it. You see, Senator Colby's. It's 12 o'clock. The polls have been open six hours, and here I am tied hand and foot. Every man in that jail controls at least 10 votes enough to swing the whole election, and not one of them at the polls. What are we going to do? We're going to stop squawking. What's that? You're through. I've sold you out. <laughs> Don't try anything, Warren. And uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I'll uh, go and vote for my brother. We O'Learys are a strange tribe. <laughs> Look at him. You know, he really looks like a male. Oh, gee, I bet Ma feels great. I 
used to do my bathing down beside the sea Until one day I came away as scared as I could be The water was great, but said very late, his not occurred to me I took the ocean Look at this. to the ocean, take a dip in the sea And when I reached the sandy beach, the sea was waving at me To take a dip in the ocean, to take a trip to the shore <laughs> Such funny sights will haunt you the night, you won't want to go anymore Bell, we're friends, aren't we? I hope so. I've got a proposition to put up to you. May start with you at first, but I think you see my point. I'm going to clean out the patch, and I want to be sure Diane doesn't oppose me. And you want me to help you? Exactly. But after all, what is it to do with me? You know how things are down there. Everything that's rotten in Chicago comes out of the patch. The whole thing is an atmosphere of vice and crime. It's getting out of control, and I'm going to wipe it out. But how? The law gives us the right to condemn property. The courts will have it appraised and set a fair price. It's what they call the right of eminent domain. It's perfectly legal and fair. But all of Dine's money is tied up in the Senate. Mine, too. That's what's worrying me. If you won't see it our way, there'll be trouble. I don't know what to say. Diane's a great person, really. He can go anywhere, do anything, if he only gets on the right track. Bell, I want to see him marry you. Have a home and children. Get something real out of life. Don't you think that's what I've been hoping for? That's what he wants, too, if he can only see it. What do you want me to do? He couldn't stand a public investigation. You know how he operates in the patch. I couldn't do a thing like that. Believe me, Bell. If I can't bring him to his senses any other way, I'll start an investigation that'll crack this town wide open. I'll use you as chief witness against Dine. Let you tell the whole rotten story of how he operates in the patch. How do you feel about that, Bell? I just wanted Bell to understand my position. The same as I want you to understand it. Dime, listen to Jack. I heard him. I know now where he stands. You knew exactly where I stood before the election. I told you and I told the people of this city. I elected you, not the people. You? Sure. It was my idea. I sent that committee to see you. I paid for it, ran it, framed it, threw Warren's men into jail. I even voted for you. I don't believe you. Is that true? Yes. I just wanted it to look hunky-dory. Why did you want me to be mayor? Oh, a lot of reasons. I wanted to see if I could do it. Or maybe it was because I wanted to see the smile on Ma's face when she rode with you in the carriage election night. All right. You elected me, but I'm mayor. Yes. You're mayor, but I'm Chicago. And I'd hate to have to kick you out. Don't try it. A lot of people like what I'm doing. What are you going to get out of this? Nothing. But I happen to have sense enough to see what Jack's after, even if you haven't. Now, wait a minute. Don't you two you start... You keep out of this. Well, of course. Since you've gone for reform, I guess we won't be seeing very much of each other. You're not going to walk out on Belle like that. It seems that she's the one that's done the walking out. Diane! Diane! <sighs> oh! A grand jury investigation. Terrible, terrible. How did you ever get involved in such a mess? I wouldn't be surprised if you weren't in for a bit of sweating yourself, Senator. You've been milking the patch for a long time. Me? Why, I'll give you to understand, sir, that my life is an open book. Open or shut, brother. Your shirt tails out with the rest of us. It's my daughter I'm thinking of. 
I'll have to take her to Europe. Get her away from here. Oh, the trip would do her good. I'll have to ask you not to see my daughter again, ever. To think I should be so deceived in a character. I've always wanted to see what a senator looks like when he gets a good, swift kick in the pants. Oh, Hattie, hurry, will you? Ah, it's all right, honey. Miss Van, you want this old plush? <laughs> yes. No. Oh, the way I don't care what you do with it. Oh, it's just fitting my trunk. Now, Miss Bell, honey, ain't a bit of use you carrying on like this. Ain't no man. Hattie, oh. hurry, hurry, will you? I'm too so mad. I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> Just let me say one thing, then you can put me out. I won't care. Oh, please go. Oh, I don't ask you to forgive me. I've said and done things that no woman could ever forgive. But you've got to believe I... I love you, Belle. I always have and I always will. Oh. Why talk about it? But you said you loved me. That's over. Well, you can't change in a moment any more than I can. We can't do without each other. I can. I'll make myself. Oh, we've fought. And maybe we'll go on fighting. But we'll do it together. We were meant for each other. Belle, marry me. Now, tonight, I've got the license in the ring. We'll go to Jack. Have him marry us. Will you, Belle? Oh, my darling. <gasps> Come on, Mr. Policeman. Right in here. Yes, sir. She's done backslid again. Do you realize that 75% of the buildings in the patch are made of pine? There are no sewers, no hydrants, nothing but filth, cesspools. But worst of all, it is a veritable fire trap. Now, that sort of thing may have been excusable when Chicago was just beginning, but that time has passed. Today, it's a menace to a great city, a cancer that must be cut out. Now, I propose to condemn the whole district, wipe it out and start all over again. Yes, what is it? Well, tell him I'll be right out. Will uh, you gentlemen go ahead with the discussion and excuse me for a little while, please? Yes, sir. Sorry, ma'am. Well, Jack, you've won. I've won what? I've been a fool. I wouldn't take a million for this moment. Now it's really the O'Leary's against the world. Well, here's the little lady who's responsible. As if I didn't know it. As the mayor of this great and noble city, can you marry people? Marry? Why, sure. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not so sure, but I'll find out. What a mayor. Is there anything in the charter about, about whether the mayor can perform a marriage ceremony? Well, I don't know, sir, but I'll, I'll find out. Well, hurry up and find out. Having taken these pledges of your affection and vows of fidelity, I do therefore, by right of the authority in me vested by the laws of the state of Illinois, pronounce you, Diane Patrick O'Leary, and you, Bell Catherine Fawcett, lawfully married husband and wife. That makes us kissing Kim, doesn't it? I don't have to tell you how lucky you are. That's right. I just want to say congratulations. Thank you very much. I wish you every happiness and good night. Congratulations. Good night. Good night. You'll never know how much all this means to me. Remember that day I told you it wasn't so bad? 
The O'Leary's are a strange tribe. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, let's go home and tell Ma, huh? <laughs> uh, sure. Sure, but uh, first, there's just one little matter I'd like to clear up. And now, Mrs. O'Leary, suppose you go ahead and testify against me. <laughs> Listen to him. <laughs> you didn't think I was going to let you two get away with it, did you? Why, Brian? <laughs> go ahead with your grand jury investigation. She's my wife. And you know the law. A wife cannot testify against her husband. <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, Belle, where are you going? <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> or you dirty... I haven't licked you since we were kids. The low, disgusting tricks you ever pulled, this is the worst. Well, you won't get away with it. I'm gonna ruin you. I'm gonna wipe out the patch and you along with it. Johnson! Yes, sir, I've sent for the police. I don't want the police. Get the city attorney. Tell him to start the condemnation proceedings and you get out of here. I never want to see your face again. Get the police commissioner. Yeah. Tell him to swear in 500 special deputies. Get in touch with the newspapers. Tell them for me that when I get through with the patch, there won't be a stick or stone left standing. Yes? Hey, one at a time. Quit that merchant. You think you'd never been fed before. You're so full already, you ought to be sleeping it off in the parlor sofa. Mutter! Mutter! Cole, oh, Schnell! Stop that heathen jabbering and talk sense. Diane, you have to defy it. Better move your comb. The devil, you say? You can take one more nip while I'm knocking their heads together. Diane married Belle Fawcett. What? Yeah, that was Jim Fellas. He just came by to tell us. And Diane and Jack have had a knockdown, drag out fight about the patch. And them grown up and brothers. I'm going to find them. Wait, I'll go with you. And wait till I get my hands on that Diane. Fighting and marrying that creature behind my back. Mrs. O'Leary! Mrs. O'Leary! Oh, Mrs. O'Leary! You're born! Look! Look! Heaven help us, I didn't put the bar between Daisy's legs. Fire! Fire! Get Daisy in the car! Fire!
Olivia. Chief! Giant! Damn, Pickle! Giant! 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 There's a big fire in the patch. Yeah, where? The Coleman Street looks like the whole street's gone. Say, you suppose that's some of the mayor's doings? Sure. The mayor's burning us out. He said he'd get us. Yeah, said he wouldn't leave a stick or a stone standing. Looks bad, boy. Yeah, burning us out. Huh? Couldn't even wait for condemnation proceedings. That's it. Yeah. I'll go with you. No, you stay here. I've got to go find out how Ma is. Give the boys a drink on the house. Have the fellows meet me here. I'll be back in half an hour. He's asked for a fight. Well, I'll give it to him. Well, what do you fellas have? I'm going to take some of this thing. Mighty funny business. What? Well, I'm not saying anything, but I haven't got much faith in these fights between brothers. Not when they're O'Leary's. They pulled some pretty smart tricks in the past, and I wouldn't put it past them to do it again. You're crazy. You heard what Diane said. No one's going to burn him out, brother or no brother. Well, I hope not. But when I was running things, nothing like this ever happened. <laughs> Come on, fellas. All right, boys, you heard what he said. Spread the word around. From now on, we'll have something to say about being run out of the patch. Wait a minute. Get the boys together. But tell them that I said we'll meet at the armory. We'll get this. Well, at a time. The patch is like tinder. There hasn't been a drop of rain for nearly three months. We've got to keep it away from the gas works. Try to keep it on the south side of the river. Have you any suggestions since General Sheridan? Yes. Make a fire break at the edge of the patch. Throw up that entire section along Randolph Street. Fight this fire with dynamite, but fight it! I authorize you to do everything possible to stop this fire. Commissioner, mobilize your whole force. Swear in as many deputies as you need. Clear that whole area. See that everybody keeps moving to the north. Right down to the lake. Requisition all the food stuff you need. Yes, sir. Donovan, you and Johnson get in touch with Milwaukee, St. Louis, all the surrounding cities. Ask them to send us all the fire apparatus they can. Wire Washington. Tell them we're going to need relief and lots of it. Money, medicine, maybe federal troops. Keep me advised. I'll be with General Sheridan. Yes, you sir. ready, General? Let's get out of here before Judgment Day gets us. Come on, honey, come on. <laughs> Gretchen and the baby in the wagon. 
They had to go. Our house was the first to burn. Our house? Why, that's dirty. Where did they start it? In our barn. Ma heard about you and Jack fighting. She left the lamp in there and Daisy kicked it over. But I thought Jack did it to burn out the patch. That mob thinks so, too. Come on, we gotta get to him. They'll kill him. Well, where is he? I don't know, but we've gotta get back and stop that mob at the Where's Senate. He? Come on. <laughs> How can I stop Why can't you look where you're going and not run running into a body? Get that three bit and thing out of here. Or I'll be laying my whip to you. some of mine if necessary, but we must search every building in the street. See that no one is left behind, no one. Quickly. Yes. Sergeant, move all police lines back one full block and let no one through. Where are you going? I've got to get through to the Senate. Nobody's going through. The mayor's orders. The street's clear. You've got a dynamite. Dynamite? Yes, make a fire break. Come on, open up. Get back. Sure. Back to the next oh. corner. Come on, back to the next block. What are you going to do? Come on. Come on, hurry it up. Come on. Jack! Back to the next one. Jack! Get back. Come. I'm going to get through with him. Jack! Jack! Turn him loose. I'll take care of him. Now get away from here, you dirty, contemptible liar. I've stood for all I'm going to stand Jack, for you. Please I've got listen part to, to me. Do and you or nobody else is going to stop me. You've got to listen to me. Here, Warren and his mob are out to get you. Everybody down here thinks you set fire to the patch to wipe it out, and they're organizing against you. It's my fault. I thought so, too. You low down for nothing. Until well, I get home. I found the house burned to the ground. Ma, Gretchen, and the baby gone. Where are they? I put them in a wagon and started them for the north side. They ought to be across the river by now. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have known better. Jack, you've got to believe me. There's Gil Warren and his gang now. What the devil do I care about Warren and his gang now? The only thing that matters is that we're together and thinking alike. Come on. There they are, men. Just like I told you, the O'Leary's. The three of them together. You men, hold that line. Don't let anybody through. Keep those people back. I don't care how you do it, but keep them back. Right. Men. Listen. Listen, men. The starting of the fire was an accident. My brother didn't have anything to do with it. That's what you say, but we know different. We've got the dynamite. It's our only chance to save Chicago. Let it burn. Man, man, think. That's just what we're doing, thinking. Thinking it's another O'Leary trick. Yes, General. Have your men move this crowd back, back to the end of that street. The dynamite is set. We're ready to light the fuses. All right, man. Move that crowd back to the end of the street. Push them back. Get them back. Oh, no, you don't. We're not moving. No one's running us out. We got rights, too, and we know where we stand. You're not going to blow us up. You don't dare. We're not going to let them destroy our homes to save their own. No. We're staying right here. We'll show them who they're dealing with. They don't own Chicago. They're... <laughs> Hey, look, look! Stop him, somebody! Diane! Diane! Don't move an inch, men. We've got our rights. We don't want any more. Diane! Jack, light him. Light him. You're hurt. 
It's just a scratch. Get back, you fools! All of you! And keep back! Light him. I love him. Oh, 
Rodney. I can't do it. No, it's no use. I'm done for. Help. Please help me. Please help me. Look at you. Won't you please? by the South Shore. and the baby are, are all right. And Jack? Oh, Ma. He's dead. Did you make it up with him? Then I'll not be weeping. It's the living that need looking after. Belle. Belle. What kind of a woman are you? With that kind of a heart and him, your husband? gone, and my boy's gone with it. But what he stood for will never die. It was a city of wood, and now it's ashes. But out of the fire will become in steel. You didn't live to see it, my lad. No more than your father did before you. God rest the two of you. 
But this Diane left, and his children to come after. He'll have his dream, Ma. Nothing can lick Chicago any more than it could lick him. I. That's the truth. We O'Leary's are a strange tribe. They're strengthless. And what we set out to do, we finish. Wow.